Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is Evermind Astro. This particular video is about Jupiter in Taurus. The natal placement also might resonate for people with Jupiter in the second house, maybe even if you got Jupiter transiting through your second house, right? It's all of this combining the Jupiter energy with the Taurus energy and what that does. This is quite special to me and it is my personal Jupiter placement. I am actually a week away from my, like the exact moment of my Jupiter return. Pretty cool. <laughs> I like to let you guys know when I'm talking about one of my personal placements because I think it makes me both better and worse um, about like interpreting the energy. Better because of course I know all about it. It's my energy. I live with it every day. I've thought a lot about it, right? <laughs> but worse because that gives me a big bias because I only know how it affects me, right? Somebody else with the same placement could have quite a different experience that I am not at all familiar with. So it's a little bit easier with these kind of um, generational placements. I mean, you know, Jupiter, not really a whole generation, more like a whole year of people, right? So I'll, I'm definitely gonna be trying to think about like all the people I grew up with with the same placement, right? Like what did we all have in common or the Jupiter in Taurus cohort? But just to let you know, this is my placement, so it might be more hit and more miss <laughs> because of that. Um, and if you're curious, mine is retrograde and in the seventh house. So Jupiter and Taurus, even though I, I really like it, vibes good for me, obviously, right? But it is kind of weird. It is kind of a weird placement, right? Because Jupiter is the planet of higher spirituality, transcendence, abundance, accumulation, right? It's this big, big, big expansive energy. And then putting that into Taurus, I mean, on the fit, on the, the spiritual, on the spiritual end of things, it's a little bit strange because you have higher spirituality coming down into the earth plane, right? Higher spirituality coming down into the earth plane. And that is really what we've been having the last year or so as we've been having this particular Jupiter in Taurus transit. Like I'm filming this in, what is it? May, 2024, by the way. It's, we've had almost a full year of Jupiter in Taurus. For those of you watching this in the future and you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a little bit strange, right? It really challenges us, especially us like spiritual types, right? Challenges us to find the spiritual in the physical. Find the spiritual in the physical. And it breaks up this language that we have. You know how we always talk about the spiritual world and the physical world, as if they're completely different things, as if the phys physical world is completely non-spiritual and the spiritual world is everything that is spiritual, right? This placement kind of breaks that up, make, it challenges you to question that assumption, right? And it challenges you to find how deeply spiritual the physical material realm is, how deeply spiritual physical material things are, how your experience in a flesh and blood physical body here on earth is the most deeply profound spiritual experience you could be having and connecting with the earth, connecting with all the things that grow on the earth and the animals that are of the earth and your own body, which is made of atoms that are from Gaia, the earth, how that is profoundly, profoundly, profoundly spiritual. And it kind of turns the whole thing on its head where your spirituality isn't about leaving the earth. It's not about trying to like escape the earth. It's about how to get more into the earth, right? And then it leads you on this whole journey about how to thrive, how to have expansive abundance, right? How to have expansive abundance. It does happen for me that I like a, a physical abundance has been quite a challenge <laughs> in my life and I'm still on that journey, right? But it also happens that in this last transit of Jupiter and Taurus and coming up in my Jupiter return, that things are kind of starting to fall into place for me. I am starting to get the, like the abundant flow, right? Not quite, you know, there fully, fully yet, but you know, we're getting there. Things are starting to work out. I'm starting to understand it more. So having Jupiter and Taurus or in the second house doesn't like immediately mean, like you might look this up and it might be like, oh, like resources and money, it's just gonna be easy for you. That, <laughs> maybe, right? I hope so. I hope so, I hope so, I hope so. But I can tell you, my Jupiter and Taurus cohort, the, the group, um, born in 88, um, not all of 88, but most of 88, and then a little bit of 89, right? Honestly, 
<laughs> we're not a very abundant group, right? <laughs> we're not a particularly abundant group. All the people I know my age, mm, nobody's really well off, right? That's because there's all kinds of other factors. So just so you know, it doesn't automatically mean that abundance is gonna be easy for you, especially if your Jupiter's retrograde, because that makes it an extra long journey. And it's because of Jupiter being a little uncomfortable in Taurus, it's a little bit of this weird mix, right? And it's because Taurus energy is this long, slow accumulation. The long, 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 slow accumulation and abundance coming as a side effect of existence. So especially if you're talking about money, right? Money. With this placement, it's kind of like hard work <laughs> is it, like hard work, right? Is that really going to get you the financial abundance that you want, right? Is that really going to be the thing that gets you there? Maybe. Or is your financial abundance and just your physical abundance, your resources, your abundant resources, is that going to come through the side effect of life, right? The side effect of your existence. And the more you allow yourself to expand into your existence, the more you allow yourself to expand into your physical life, into the earth experience, into the material world, that is how abundance comes as a side effect. Because with Taurus, there is a little bit of a theme of just exist, just, just exist, just live your life, <laughs> okay? Just live your life and things come as a side effect, right? Things come as a side effect. <laughs> a little bit of a funny example here, right? Like, <laughs> to use sex as an example, right? With Taurus energy, it would kind of say that having an orgasm isn't the goal of sex. Having an orgasm is just a side effect of sex. So same thing, right? Same thing with abundant resources. That, that comes as a side effect of you living your life in, a, in that energy of thriving, right? Really important, I think, with this placement, don't wait for the abundance to show up before you start thriving, start thriving now, and then the abundance will show up as a side effect of how you are thriving on this earth. It's gonna be so much of a theme here about thriving on earth, thriving on earth. This is not the energy of an ascetic. Although I do know, I do know people with this placement, like in my cohort who I grew up with, who are very ascetic, right? Who are very ascetic, who, I mean, I'm thinking of one person in particular. So overall, I don't think this is a very common thing, but just to mention that, right? That's, it is possible. Anything's, anything is possible, right? We're talking generalities and nothing is 100% in astrology, right? It's just kind of talking about general themes and general trends and all of that. So yeah, I do know one person, Jupiter and Taurus, who is quite ascetic, who does deny the earth plane, but I would say that doesn't work out very well for them because that person has not, has not allowed themselves to expand into into life, right? They have not allowed themselves to expand into thriving. And so it depends on your personal placements, right? Like if you got Jupiter conjunct your sun or your moon or your ascendant, or if it's somehow really highlighted in your chart, then you are like a Jupiter person, right? Expansion and abundance and having this overflow, this flooding, flooding, flooding overflow of energy that might come more naturally to you. That's not everybody though, right? If your Jupiter is kind of hanging out by itself or if it's like afflicted in some way, if it's like squared with Saturn or something, it could be expansion into an abundant life could be a big, big, big challenge for you. I can tell you that with mine, it's retrograde and it's just kind of hanging out by itself. It's has been a challenge for me and it has taken up until my Jupiter return to really allow myself to surrender into this expansion where because like my natural state I want to especially if you guys are my age right if you're a Jupiter and Taurus from like 88 or 89 and you have a Virgo south node as well right other other Jupiter groups you would have a different placement right but the people who are my age we have Virgo south nodes and that, that is like in super contrast to this Jupiter and Taurus because Virgo wanting to restrict 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 right for us, we need to go into that Pisces North Node journey to expand and surrender and like go with the flow, pairing that with the Jupiter and Taurus, expanding into material, the material world, right? Big challenge for me. I've had to learn, I can't just do one thing, right? Because in my ideal world, I would like to just focus on one thing and have that like work out for me, right? <laughs> to just have like one job and make my millions of dollars doing like one thing. 
Jupiter and Taurus doesn't isn't really about that, right? <laughs> isn't really about that. What I'm finding is that I have to have all of my fingers in multiple pies, right? I have to be doing this and doing that and then this project and that project and multiple jobs and multiple businesses and like doing all of these different things and slowly, slowly, slowly over time, there is this accumulation, this accumulation of this momentum and it accumulates and the momentum slowly that gets going, but it's like the snowball effect, right? But getting that snowball going is really hard and you have to allow yourself to expand into it. So your personal relationship with expansion and accumulation it's going to be unique. Some of you, that's going to be your natural state. Some of you, it's going to be the opposite of your natural state, right? Um, but to really, like in my learning anyway, in order to really fully experience the beauty of the Jupiter and Taurus, it's, it, there's the two factors here. One, it's blending the spirituality with the physical world, right? Realizing that it's not spiritual versus physical. It is the spiritual in the physical, right? The spiritual in the physical, finding and like getting like super, super, super grounded. If you are interested in like this beyond grounding theme, I just saw one, 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 one. That's the time on the, on the, on the camera. So perfect synchronicity here. So if you want to know more about like my thoughts on how to get really, really grounded from a spiritual perspective, like spiritual grounding and the spirituality of the earth, check out my other channel, Evermind Oracle. There's a link to it down below. I have some recent videos about that, right? That might be for somebody. So Anyway, the one aspect here uh, is the higher spirituality coming down to earth. And then the other aspect of this placement is about expanding, like literal physical expansion and physical accumulation in the material world. And I do have a hunch, guys, I do have a hunch <laughs> on this one that uh, Jupiter and Taurus people, towards the end of our lives, I mean, hopefully it's not like the end, the end, but maybe... I mean, I'd be interested. Are you guys, any of you watching this, are you in your 50s, 60s, 70s, right? 80s? I don't think any, I don't think I get very many viewers in their 80s, but you know, did your abundance accumulate over time? Because I kind of have this sneaking suspicion that for the group that is my age, that we are going to be much more abundant in our retirement years, right? And that, that kind of goes against the fear, you know, a lot of the fear that is going around where, um, you know, we, we feel that by the time we retire that there's going to be like nothing for us, right? But I, I do kind of, I do kind of suspect, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for this, that by the time we're much older and we've been accumulating, accumulating and expanding and expanding, our later years are going to be much more abundant than our younger years because the Jupiter and Taurus requires this long-term accumulation and expansion in the material, right? And that's why this energy is slightly odd because Jupiter is wanting to attract and accumulate and attract and accumulate, but it has to do that on a material level, right? When it's Jupiter is up there, like in Sagittarius, right? And it's just all like, woo, that's like super fast, super fast attraction, like blah, right? When it's down here in Taurus, it's slow accumulation and slow attraction. And it takes a while, right? It takes a while, but I have high hopes for Jupiter and Taurus people that we attract our abundance and we accumulate it over time and we also continue to delve more deeply get our spirituality and our spiritual experience more and more and more grounded into the earth so that is my basic spiel on jupiter and taurus i would love to know what this placement is like for you especially for those of you who are you know other other ages right jupiter and taurus would be every 12 years so lots of people older than me on this one maybe one group younger than me that would be tuning into this anyway I got lots of links down below. Sign up for my Accelerated Evolution Container. It is a monthly subscription service. Eight bucks a month. That's seven. Eight bucks a month. <laughs> Full moon and new moon videos, right? I go really deep into each lunation and talk about, you know, how we can utilize that energy to accelerate the evolution of our consciousness. It's really fun. I love those videos. They're like the favorite thing I got going on right now. I um, have another YouTube channel. I have a website where you can get private readings. I have an Etsy shop where you can also buy the same readings. If you just like Etsy, I have a newsletter. Check me out. See you guys later. Bye.